Everything is, uh, we're back in action here. It's July. Uh, we got Bruce Bagley with us. We got Coach Ricky Perez with us today. Uh, pretty excited to talk hoops in the middle of July. Uh, one thing I do want to say is we'll do a little little uh, pump here. So uh, we have some we have some new new gear available. <laughs> we got some new gear available. Hello, hoop store. So uh, I don't know. Maybe Coach Perez, when we when we run into him this year, we'll we'll find an Hello Hoop shirt to wear at practice. It's 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 got some black in it, Coach. So you might be okay with your colors. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, we'll start with uh, Coach Perez. Hey, 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 we'll wear it for a game. We'll wear it for a game. I like it. I like it. I like it. We'll come to McCaskey. When you guys play McCaskey this year, that'll be that, that'll shock them. <laughs> that'll, that'll play with their minds. It'll be wild. <laughs> hey, um, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about, I mean, you have had just a wonderful run here this last, last year, capped off with a PIAA uh, championship and named uh, Coach of the Year in the 6A again. But I want to know from a coaching point of view, let, let's, let's stop at the game last year. What do you do with your players from last year to, let's say, about now? And what's going on maybe from the now until basketball season starts? Well, I, I think, you know, right now, um, well, first of all, thank you for having us. And, uh, you know, for those who saw the T-shirt, make sure you get out and, and get your LL Hoop swag. So, um, but, uh, you know, it's been a, uh, it, we stick to the script. You know, it's very important to keep guys in the gym, keep guys in the weight room. You know, um, we, um, I mean, and they're gym rats. They're keeping the gym open every day for the guys making sure that they get their lifts in. And that's what's most important. You know, uh, we're not always going to be the most talented basketball team out there, especially when you get to that higher level, but we want to be the most strong, the, you know, the, the, the strongest team out there. So, uh, you know, they're in the gym every day, you know, every day we've had a very, very uh, uh, full summer schedule in terms of games. Um, you know, for high school, things got a little more exciting for the summer with the new, live period um you know so you know we got out to xavier university for a weekend um that was a great experience you know playing up there uh and then we played over in philly live for two weekends and uh you know did 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 fairly well so you know gave the guys an opportunity to uh you know get in front of some coaches um you know continue to put our brand out there and you know now they're playing in allentown summer league they were playing in westchester summer league when we just won the championship. So, you know, hey, just, just keeping them active, you know, keeping them active, keeping them around great people. And so it's been exciting. I, I, I want to I wanna do a quick follow-up and then we'll turn it over to Bruce. But, um, you know, I'm an ex-coach and I was, I, I coached at a smaller school and a, and a bigger school, but obviously you coach in the biggest school in district three. So my question is how, how do you deal with, with, big numbers. I mean, you have big numbers. You got junior highs feeding into your program. I see you're very active with your youth program as well. I mean, what, how, how does that work out? You're talking a lot of kids and then, you know, eventually you get down to 10 or 12 at the end. Yeah. You know, what's unfortunate is you get to know so many families so many kids you know when you're you're I always tell them just because I don't give you a jersey doesn't mean I don't love you you know but at the end of the day you're only going to choose the cream of the crop you know um that can is ready to represent ready high basketball because not everyone can do it you know they think they can as they're coming up but you know at the level that we're playing right now this is not for everybody you know so I think for myself as a coach I've really been able to create those boundaries you know just because we've created a relationship and i've seen you for so long doesn't guarantee anything you know at the end of the day we're going to have to choose the best 12 to play you know um and you know we'll, we'll advocate we'll help we'll, we'll be trying to get them into different 
We're having a little, we're having a little connectivity problems with the coach here. Try to keep tabs, come and go. Okay. All right. Let's turn it over to Bruce. Let's let's turn it over to Bruce here. Bruce, I know, I know you you followed Reading a little closer than I did this year, especially in the season. Um, what do you got for coach? You know, coach, uh, gosh, I still remember very vividly, uh, you know, being with you right after the uh the championship and, uh, you know, talking, <laughs> uh, how emotional that was. I mean, it was so emotional. You couldn't even remember what play you called in the huddle. <laughs> well, you know, when asked, but, uh, you know, that was a very special moment for me. Obviously it was very special for you, but I can't tell you on a personal level, uh, you know, how emotional that was for me, you know, following you guys, the move over to Burke's Catholic, and then ultimately, you know, culminating in a championship. Talk a little bit about, you know, that emotional uh, roller coaster that you went through from, you know, being at an, uh, you know, that empty gym at Reading High and then moving over to Burke's Catholic and then the run for the championship. Uh, you know, Mr. Hess, uh, you know, who was the AD over at uh, Burke's Catholic, he just now received another position. But, uh, you know, there's some amazing people. So I really thank them for opening their doors up to us. Um, it was a beautiful, you know, it, it was the ups and downs of the season really brought us all closer together. I was just explaining this uh, to a couple of my old high school coaches yesterday. And we got together and, uh, you know, just telling them how the distractions of everything that was going on just really made us focus on the, on the team and the, and the task at hand. You know, there was no extra, you know, really going on. And uh, so it helped us really, you know, funnel our, all of our energy. You know, you didn't have to deal with any other activities or other things going on. So, you know, going to Burke's Catholic, the way that they opened the doors to us and really just loved us and appreciated us just really was an added layer, um, you know, for us. And being able to allow, you know, a little bit of fans in, that was great, you know. So, I mean, if we stayed at the Geigel, I don't know. Do we have the advantage or don't we? I don't know. You know, we'll never be able to tell that. You know, tell that story, but... Um, it was just a, it, it was, it was perfect. So, um, but, you know, it really just focusing in on those 12 guys, you know, and the coaches, that was the best part. Cause we had a lot of privacy, you know, with COVID, nobody was in the locker room or nobody knew, no, you know, things going on. So it mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, all the energy, it was, it was as, 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 as real as it got, you know. Well, you know, and another thing that's happened in the off season that I think has got to be emotional for you is, you know, Matt Flowers uh, finding his own path, going back to his alma mater there in Muhlenberg. Talk a little bit about, you know, what that's going to mean, you know, for you personally, but what you think that's going to mean for Burke's basketball, Matt, taking over at Muhlenberg. You there, Coach? Uh, well, Bruce, yeah, I'm there. I'm losing a little service. I'm going to go inside here and see okay. if I can get something okay. a little better. All right. Well, All right. Hey, hey, Bruce, you and I will talk until Coach gets back up and connected here. Yeah, yeah. No, but, uh, you know, uh, like the New England Patriots, you know, I mean, all of their assistant coaches, uh, you know, after championships, uh, you know, would depart. And now here, you know, here's uh, uh, Rick with uh, – uh, you know, a, a major um, cog in the wheel there, Matt Flowers, who uh, is going back to his alma mater uh, at, at Muhlenberg. And, uh, you know, that is, I think, probably going to be, a, you know, one of the single biggest stories in Burke's basketball now is that he's not part of the Reading High program. And he's actually you know, up against coach there. So yeah. uh, I, that's I, really, I'd like to get, I'd like to get, like I said, Rick's take there. Now we're much better. There we go. Uh, All right, coach, you're back on buddy. 
I got it. Good. So talk a Good. little bit about Matt's move. Um, I'm super proud of him. You know, he he deserved this opportunity. And Matt is so loyal. At first, he uh, didn't pursue the opportunity, you know. So uh, Muhlenberg had actually opened, reopened the position, you know, the hiring process again. And, uh, you know, I looked at it, both he and I and uh, our brother Rob Flowers, who was the head football coach over at Daniel Boone, you know, we looked at it like, you know, Matt, this is an opportunity you you have to take, you know, advantage of going back to your alma mater. But, you know, for Matt, it was always about our brotherhood, wanting to be together, you know. And I said, well, listen, we're, that will never change, you know. Um, I could see at the end of his game, him, you know, running down the highway to get to ours or me running down the highway to get to his. But, uh, you know, he was he's the backbone of the program. You know, he really – made sure the right people, you know, Dale, as you mentioned, you know, how do you, with all these kids coming in all those numbers, how do the right people get to the forefront? Well, that's because Matt, you know, being our JV coach, he made sure he filtered them out. You know, they weren't real. They were never going to get through him, you know, and, uh, and not to mention, you know, you guys understand in business, somebody who has your best interest right next to you and always deflecting things and always helping. So, you know, you can't replace a guy like that, you know. Um, so, you know, we'll have to move on. We have some amazing coaches. But, uh, you know, I, I'm just thinking we're excited for his move. I think, you know, as a family, as a community, you know, we're all excited for him. So uh, I know I think February 8th we have a showdown. So that, that'll be exciting. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I think I'll be honest with you. I think that that's, it's, it's great for Burke's basketball. Um, and, and speaking about that, um, and not necessarily, you know, talking basketball, but just talking Burke sports, um, are, are we in the midst of, you know, just kind of a, you know, kind of a, a golden age of, of Burke sports here. I mean, you with the state championships, um, you know, the pipeline of, uh, of, uh, football players, uh, you know, going to Penn state, um, you know, the, I mean, you've got obviously got some perspective here. Just talk about the landscape of, of what it's like for a coach uh, competing, you know, in this atmosphere of uh, Berks County athletics right now. Well, it, it's, a, it's amazing, you know, and it's humbling because I'll tell you what, there was a time when, you know, Berks County wasn't, you know, at the top of the ladder. You know, I remember us, you know, really reflecting as to why we can't get out of the first round of states or why we can't, you know, move forward in states. And I, you know, I've been coaching since 2000, 2003 at Reading, you know, so I've seen the days when the mid pen dominated district three, you know, I've seen those and uh, it was always trying to break that, you know, it, it break that mold there. And uh, I think Berks County has done that over the last couple of years. I think we uh, finally have gotten out of our comfort zone you know, it was okay to just be a Berks County champion. And that was that, you know, then you go to district, you flop, but you qualify for state, you lose in the first round. And that became the norm. Um, you know, we got tired of being the doormat, you know, when it came to basketball, you know, football always had that pedigree, you know, but now they're just going to a whole nother level. I mean, like I said, I was meeting with, uh, I don't know, you know, well, you guys should remember John Yoakum from Muhlenberg yep, and sure those is. great staffs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he was my high school football coach. So both the Flowers brothers and myself got together with them yesterday and his staff. And we were just exchanging coaching stories, laughing. It was just an honor to be in their presence. Um, and, uh, you know, knowing where those programs were and just the, the people that we were amongst. I mean, you don't you don't realize how many great talents you know, <laughs> on a regular basis, you know, so. But Berks County is definitely on the rise. I think what's happened the last couple of years is just the start. Um, so there's some great things that are going on. And I think I think the youth programs have a lot to do with that, especially, you know, Reading KTB exposing kids early, you know, kids getting out, AU seeing things that are different. You know, I think that's really helping the game too. Yeah, and I think too, uh, it isn't just, uh, it, you know, it's, it's I think it, it each and it's not just i'll be honest with you it's not just the big schools it's the small schools as well 
I mean, that, that have really seen a rise in their success. And quite honestly, I think, you know, obviously on the basketball side, a lot can be attributed to, you know, what you're doing there uh, in, in rising up that type of program. And I think that that's kind of filtering in amongst not just obviously running high, but it's demonstrating for the rest of the schools and the school districts of, of what's required to be, a, you know, an upper echelon program. So yeah, it's for them to compete, they're having to start. And I think that, you know, as it, as it goes, I mean, one program just kind of elevates everything else. And I think that on the basketball side, clearly that's, that's what uh, I think that you're doing and you can see it across the board. Look what, you know, obviously you had a, a tremendous talent there with uh, Stevie Mitchell, but look at how Wilson's program, and, you know, is elevated and uh, Muhlenberg and, you know, wow, it's just been pretty incredible for me to see because I agree with you, you know, where the basketball was in Berks County, you know, uh, you know, pr- I think it's like uh, uh, it, Berks basketball is pre-Lonnie and post-Lonnie. <laughs> and, and what do you think? Well, I mean, you know, like I said, pre Lonnie, you know, we struggled. You know, it, it was right now. I'm journaling uh, my entire career, so I'm going back and watching film and you know, because you start telling fairy tales, you start to forget. You know, I couldn't even tell you the play we called. You know, five right. minutes later, you know, <laughs> you start to forget. You know how things really, uh, you know, step by step played out. But uh, you know, at that point, I, I think you know he's he's really one that exposed us you know to a higher level you know of what could be at that time and and as you said no one wants to continue losing by 50 you know i mean there was 2015 2060 i think i think we were winning a games i looked at them 50 points 55 60 you know and it was a show you know so those other teams are looking like nah we, we can't keep allowing this you know but we wanted to make a statement I mean, you know, we followed up right after that the first state championship with a district championship, mm-hmm. you know, and we post Lonnie, we wanted to let it be known that what was happening pre Lonnie wasn't going to happen anymore. You know, we will be a state power. We made it to that point. We were exposed. We understood how things moved, you know, those losses to all their dice and all, you know, those other, those big games. I mean, you, you got to learn from them. You know, you want to be big time is one thing, but, you know, you could play those teams in the summer, but playing them in March is something else, you know? So I, I think, you know, Lonnie took us on a journey that, you know, we'll never forget. I mean, you know, we'll keep those things close to the chest here at Red Bay High. Mm-hmm. And you don't uh, shy away from anybody either. I mean, uh, you know, you, you play all comers when it comes to, you're not, you know, you go everywhere. You're going Obviously, you played in, you know, the Philly Live thing or two, but, you know, you're playing the likes of Chester every year and, you know, all the Philly teams there. Uh, talk about your scheduling philosophy a little bit and, and, and how you try and ready your team, um, you know, for a postseason run each year. Well, when we first started, I, I think I bit off more than I could chew because that was our, you know, our philosophy was play anybody. You know, well, yeah, we played uh, Newman Goretti on national TV and they gave us the 60 point. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it, we weren't ready at that point. So, you know, uh, Reading High traditionally always has a tough schedule. You know, that's that's just with the traditions and the teams that they play. But lately, you know, some things are they're changing. You know, maybe some of the teams we played historically are not as strong now. You know, I hope to see them come back. But for us, you know, Coach Reyes would tell me, you, you got to take care of your backyard first. OK, so, you know, we feel we, you know, yes, we may be state champs and district champs, but we're not Burks champs, you know. So we, we have to go back and reclaim that championship. But, you know, then we'll go through and I'll identify every district champ throughout the state or anybody who was in the final four or and those are the first teams we'll look at you know, and try to get them in. Um, when we had Coach Randall, who was now at Deeroff, um, he was amazing at saying, well, they made it to the final four. They had five sophomores, three juniors. We need to schedule them, you know. So, uh, and one of the other things, we started to focus more on teams that we knew we had to play in states. 
Um, you can't you can't win state without beating District 12 and District 1. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you don't see District 1 or 12 in your schedule, it, you know, it, to be blindsided when states start, that's a bad idea. Yeah, you, know? you got to have the ability to connect the dots. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you need your, your fast paced teams. You need your slower paced teams. You know, that district one basketball, they're probably the best coaches, you know, in the state, you know, they're amazing. Um, so you may see a team that doesn't only has two, three basketball players, but the way they coach them, you know, I mean, it's unreal, you know, and then the Catholic leagues have, has a different style because of higher level of talent, you know? Um, so, you know, you got to be able to adapt and play all those teams. So, you know, I was just on the phone with Mr. McLeod this morning and you identify him, District 3, District 1, District 12, District 11, you know, which is another brand of basketball, you know, so, but you got to see all different type of flavors and we try to say, all right, in the state tournament, this is what we're going to see. So we need to see those people, maybe not that exact team, but we need to see that style. You know? so. Yeah. Dell, you got something else for coach? Well, yeah, I, I, I'm going to do some flashback. I wasn't going to do this, but I, I almost have to because I'm, I'm watching Coach Perez. And um, uh, I, I work with Bruce on the NFHS. So uh, normally LO Hoops gets credential, but I was courtside and uh, I watched the game for your PIAA championship. So, Coach, I got two questions for you on that. Number one is you fell behind early. I think it was like 12 to 2, something like that. And I believe you called a timeout. What did you, what were your feelings and what did you, what did you uh, relate to your, your players at that point in the game? At that point, it's it just poise, you know, basketball is a game of runs. So we're going to have ours. Their emotion was up early and uh, we had watched them on a lot of film. They jumped on a lot of teams early. So they were doing exactly what they had been doing all season, you know, getting the early leads, getting the early transition, you know, um, and not just baskets, offensive rebounds. So we just had to get back to the game plan at that point and just tell them we're going to be all right. You know, <laughs> you're, you know, you've been here before. We're good. You know, Wilson put us down a couple of times, double digits. We'll be all right. Do you want to be down double digits? No. Um, you know, and I learned that watching a lot of NBA basketball in the huddle, those coaches are always right here. Yeah. You know, so don't create any panic. You know, we knew our run was going to come. And also we understood that as much as, uh, you know, we have so much trust in Ruben, the matchup that they were giving him just wasn't favorable for him bringing up the ball. Mm -hmm. So we had to get him off the ball. And at that point, Joey was inserted and, uh, you know, Joey Chapman really took over and was able, you know, they had, a, I think it was number two, Randolph and another kid who were great on ball defenders so but their best player Russell Diggs was not a very good defender so we said anybody he guards that's who brings the ball up so um, I, I think we were pretty successful doing that and then uh, trying to get Ruben involved which was important because I, I we went down we were, went down what was it two maybe at half and Ruben was at no points I believe or single digit something very low and then Daniel Alcantara had also been I said, we're in a great place, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because eventually those two will erupt, you know, and they did, you know, they did, you know, come at the end of the game. And I mean, and then Moro, when you have Moro playing at that high level, I feel very confident playing against anybody. So he was a, he was a beast. That was fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. I, I, um, the, the other thing, the other thing that I noticed, and, and again, sitting courtside at a, at a district a championship game like that, the intensity level is pretty high. The referees are kind of letting guys play more. There's a lot of contact, and probably you don't get as much of that in, in your regular season, but your kids adapted. I thought uh, – I didn't think the game was, like, real clean, but I think that benefited you guys. I, I think you cranked up the defense. I think the defense for you – I mean, I, I know you had a couple guys that kind of had career games, but I think the defense was was the key there. What are your thoughts? I mean, you slowed down their top player. He, he went off for a while, and then it seemed to me like he got a little tired at the end, and he just didn't have, didn't have the shot. Yeah, and, I mean, that's Redding High basketball. I mean, most of the time at that level, we don't have the best players, you know. They, they've got the most recruited, the most skilled, you know, they play an NBA style of basketball, you know, and they, they, when you watched them on film, everything was, 
they really got what they wanted every single time. And we just had to disrupt that and see, you know, I, we needed them to be a bit more physical when the referees allowed that, you know, we needed to see if, if they were able to take themselves to that level. Um, Cause Dell, that's something we firmly believe in. And I've, I've always spoke publicly about our work with uh, Dr. Rick Neff, um, sports psychologist. And I just feel that where we're, where we are building a basketball player and where others are building back uh, athletes, it, it, it's two different places. And I don't, you know, when you're talking about the emotional concept and digging deep on kids and you don't know what you're going to find when you're in, in sports psychology sessions, you know, there's old traumas and things that are coming. That's where we're building from while others are, they're building just skill, you know, and, and I know that if we're allowed to play that physically and that passionately, we can compete with anybody because not many, I mean, nobody can uh, match our intensity level. I mean, that's something I will stand on. All right, let me, let me follow up with an X and O question. Um, <laughs> you're, you're, you're in the huddle. There's, there's a timeout. The other team has a chance to win the game. And you steal the out of bounds play. So what was your what was your talk in the huddle? I mean, it was amazing. It was just it was amazing. I'm there like, uh oh, this is gonna come down to a last second shot or a rebound. And I, you know, I'm thinking like, oh, don't don't have a miss in an offensive board. Let's go here, Reading. So what what did you say to your players at that point? Well, at, at that point, we uh, first of all needed to get everyone back together because we had the turnover, you know, uh, before that. So, you know, we just had to get them mentally into the place of making the next play. Um, where they did get us, we wanted Moro on the ball because uh, we wanted to create a lollipop pass, you know, because those are easier to steal. Mm -hmm. um, now, Archbishop Wood had the perfect play call. Um, they just didn't get the perfect pass because um, what ended up happening is when they set the, set the back screen, um, we were going to switch. <laughs> which we ended up switching. So they got exactly what they wanted. Um, but at that point, Joey made a great read. Um, we did get the lollipop pass. That's the only thing we could take credit for in the huddle. You know, Joey and the rest of them made an amazing play. And uh, he did not walk, but they did miss a foul call. So he should have been on the foul line. <laughs> <laughs> but he, yeah, there he was a lot. That was probably the, the controversy there at the end of the game was that uh, it, it seemed like, yeah, he it, that they thought the game was over maybe sooner than the game being over, and uh, there that was the only controversy there. But it was very enjoyable, and you know, um, and you, when you talked uh, just a moment ago on you know NBA coaches are just like this or whatever like that, who are some of your contemporaries now at the professional college and high school level? that you maybe, you know, take a look at or model some of your own philosophies under? I mean, there, there's so many. I mean, uh, you know, of, of course, Jay Wright, you know, he's my favorite coach. Um, you know, he just, the class, you know, how he handles winning, losing all situations, just an immense amount of, of poise. I love Shaka Smart, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just the intensity that he brings to the game. You know, um, you know, I've really enjoyed watching Doc Rivers. Uh, you know, he, he's amazing, you know, uh, and I just, you know, what I've really, it, your longevity in coaching, when you look at all those coaches, they've had so many ups and downs, you know, and uh, you know, Coach Jay Wright, he educated me before. It was just that, you know, it, it, you got to believe in your work, you know, and when you see these people, you know, these coaches, you know what framework Shaka Smart is now going to bring to Marquette. You know, you know, they take that with them wherever they go, win or lose. You know, they don't veer from those things, you know. Um, so, you know, that that's it's so many, so many great coaches out there, you know. <laughs> and, and so it is, uh, I enjoy watching uh, my brother, Rob Flowers. I think he's, he's an outstanding coach. You know, he allows me, um, you know, in some of his group chats and some of his, and for no other reason, because I don't know anything about football. I blitz eight all the time if it, <laughs> if it was up to me. But, he's, uh, <laughs> but you know, just hearing his leadership, um, you know, Matt Flowers is one of my favorite coaches, you know. Um, you know, I have a, a ton of respect. I love watching Coach Coldren. 
you know, and there's so many, the list can go on and on and on, but that's one of the things I'm always going to, you know, always in, in, in awe, you know, of coaches, especially with longevity, you know, in the game, you know, how did they make it this far? And well, like you, I mean, how, how, you know, ma- you know, making it this far, I mean, not too many guys in the state uh, have two state championships in their belt. So uh, obviously don't, uh, don't sell yourself short in what you've accomplished personally and professionally. Um, and, you know, your contributions to, you know, the community are just incredible. And uh, I mean, me as a fan and, you know, and look, I'm a fan. Uh, it, it's just incredible. Uh, the accomplishment and, and how proud uh, we all are of what Reading High basketball represents. And, uh, you know, y- you brought it there. So congratulations. Hey, let, let me hop in here. Um, I, I got a couple of things. First of all, I, I wish I had my cell phone recording when, when Coach was talking to Bruce because Coach was singing. I mean, he was singing on the floor and they're turning the lights off and he is just singing and going crazy. And I'm just like, this is awesome. This is just, I've seen, I've seen a lot of that stuff at, at Hershey. I've seen guys smoking cigars and they got in trouble for and talking to the media. But I mean, I have never seen a coach sing and so excited. So that was pretty cool, coach. I got to say that. Now, I, I want to follow up on, on the sports psychologist. So how, how does that work with your program? Does, does, does he do group sessions or individual sessions or is that part of your practice or how does that work? Just, just help me out. I, I know some of the schools are, are looking to emulate you guys with that. So what, what, ha- what we did was back in uh, 2013, 14, 13, 14, 14, 15, um, you know, Lonnie had, become the guy. I mean, he was, you know, nationally recognized, you know, undergoing a lot. I mean, when you have schools, national schools flying in to come see him, and I'm not talking colleges, I'm talking high schools trying to recruit him. And, Mm -hmm. you know, he really didn't embrace who he was becoming at that time. And it became a lot, you know, because he was a true student athlete, you know, a, a kid of Reading, you know, where things were pretty simple for him. And at that point, I remember, uh, we, we sat him um, during the Christmas tournament championship, all right? And we had lost uh, to Coach Binder beat us up pretty bad um, that day. So uh, I talked to our superintendent. I said, listen, if we're going to claim that we're going to provide our young men, okay, and even Lonnie at that capacity uh, with the best of services, we need to take it to another level. You know, and we didn't know he and I were just Dr. Mumi and I were just brainstorming what we thought we were going to do. And then uh, I reached out to a company, uh, Mind of an Athlete. And then uh, so, you know, I knew nothing about sports psychology. Just just, hey, let's reach out, see what happens. Um, and, you know, the thought then is, oh, you probably can't afford it, you know. Um, but Dr. Neff stepped up um, and Dr. Neff, you know, provided the service pro bono and him and Lonnie became. I mean, the best of friends, they had an amazing relationship. So everything started with him and Lonnie. Mm -hmm. Now at that point, what would happen every time he came to see him, the group just, his group became bigger. (laughs) You know, it was uh, now he's got the entire basketball team. So eventually he was just like, I love this. I want to do this. Um, So he was in pursuit of his, uh, own business in a ridge. And, uh, he, uh, he, he just, he fell in, 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 we, we fell in line with the family. It was such a seamless, beautiful transition. Uh, I mean, our relationship now, you know, he, he's going to come to our camp and speak to 20 kids today. Um, you know, he, you know, he never asked for a dime. He never asked for, you know, which we're lucky because I know that's not the case, you know, but he just, uh, he fell in love with us and we fell in love with him. And it made sense because I'm a clinician in my, in my real job, <laughs> you know? So, but as a head coach, you're such a generalist, you know what I mean? So you're touching on everything, but having somebody focus solely on that. And uh, I'll tell you, that was, it's the most amazing experience I've ever been through. I, I don't know if I'd still be coaching had it not been for him. Uh, 
you know, because when we look at sports psychology, we think something has to be wrong. You know, oh, he's getting counseling because something's wrong. No, this is different. This is training the mind, just like you train the body, you know. And uh, I, I mean, the mental experiences that I've had, the emotional experiences, I, they're second to none. I, I, so. How does it, how, how, how does the, the how does it work with you and the players and and how you incorporate Dr. Nath? Yeah, so what he'll do is he'll he'll see us on a weekly basis. Um, you know, he, he'll have whether it be a Zoom or he's visiting us in person. Uh, lately, things have been a, a bit hectic for him, obviously with his new uh, blessing at Villanova. But uh, you know, I try to take it under consideration. Hey, Doc, if you got to move on, I get it. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, Doc is adamant. No, I'm all in, you know. Um, and it's just been an amazing experience. And this year, pardon me, I got to plug up the computer. Hold on. Sure. <laughs> got to love computer issues. Got to love Live. Gotta love yep, gotcha. Coach Perez is back. <laughs> <laughs> this has been quite the experience. We've not only got a, got a conversation, but then we've got the tour of the house and yeah, yeah. Yeah. dogs in the background, hoops in the background, thankful in the background. It's all good. Go ahead, Rick. Do we lose him again? Oh, there he is. Oh, okay, there he is. coach. You know, so yeah. You know, so the thing is with Dr. Neff is that uh, you know, he he just helps us realize something. And he talked about this year how we had achieved and what's the pinnacle of therapy, he said, uh, or not the therapy, I'm sorry, of sports psychology is us achi achieving, you know, a collective unconscious. And he said, you know, how it's like when your minds morph together, you know what I mean? And it's, and you can see it in the game, you know, certain players play well, certain times, you know, whether it be uh, 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 Ruben with a fa or Daniel with a fast start, you know, and then Moro would kick in and Miles would kick in, you know, those things weren't happening by accident, you know, and mentally they became, they became one, you know, and it was um, when he, when he really highlights those things, it, it's, it's beautiful, you know, it's, it, it really takes you back a moment, you know. Nice, nice. Well, you guys, you guys are trendsetters in, in, uh, in many ways. Let me, let me ask you this going forward. I, I think, and you know, I talked to my buddy Andy about this a little bit. I think you guys were major dark horses in last year's uh, PIAA tournament and the tournament being a little bit different. You didn't have to play as many games and that was cool. And then you guys basically won with a young, young team. So it's gotta be different going forward with a young team that, that is achieved at a high level. So I, what's your approach with those players? Because, you know, you talked about Lonnie and getting different things, but these players right now are getting, you know, a lot of high fives and pats in the backs and, you know, somehow you, you're going to keep them focused. H how do you do that? Or you just move forward and say, this is what we do. Yeah. It, well, the, the, the great thing is, <laughs> you know, everybody says, Oh, I got a great group of kids. We got a great group of kids. We got this, this, this group is pretty humble. Um, you know, there's not, I mean, them winning it, they didn't have the, well, obviously they had the character of a state champion, but they didn't have this DNA where you thought like, oh my goodness, they could win a state championship, you know? Um, so they, they are quite humble, but it's, it's now there's a realization um, of what they can be, you know? And there's a maturity about them that's different, the way that they work, you know? And as I mentioned earlier, you know, our, our new coach is um, newer coaches, you know, in the pro coach Francis Camaro, who's a 2008 graduate, his team went 30 and one um, when we had that amazing season, you know, we brought back coach Banker, who was also part of that 30 and one team. And then uh, coach Richardson, who's a running high alumni coach, Ruben Rodriguez, who is Ruben Rodriguez's father is also an alumni and uh, Brian Richardson, who brings a spiritual aspect to the program, but those guys and coach John King, he also, uh, is, is very entrenched in the, in the, in the, in, in the community. But the reason that I say all of their names is, is important because at this point I get to step back because they're such gym rats and they're so eager. So now the kids are developing these relationships with these amazing people. They're constantly in the gym. They're constantly working. So at some point, I, I really think almost they've turned that part off because they're just so focused on the work as these coaches are. 
happen. You know, because when you, when you have newer coaches who are coming, they also want to establish themselves. So you're seeing the program go to another level, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited for them, you know? Um, and there are no discussions of state championship. There's no discussion of repeating. There's no, I don't allow any of that, you know, just work, you know? Um, and leaders like Ruben Rodriguez and Joey, Xavier Davis, I mean, those guys, they're, they're, they're once in a lifetime type people, you know? Hey, let me ask the group. Yeah. Let, let me hit you up with one more and then I'll let Bruce come in. I know everybody's got to kind of go. We're running up against the clock here. How, how do you deal with recruiting? I mean, a lot of schools don't have to deal with, I mean, you dealt with Lonnie Walker, who, who's special, special, obviously, but how do you deal with these, um, you know, division one, division two coaches wanting to come to practice, wanting to see you guys, wanting to talk to you guys. Do you you deal with that or do you assign a a coach to deal with that? Oh, we all can deal with it. I mean, you know, they're always more than welcome, you know. Um, And, you know, for us, we don't, if you're going to come to the guy, go, you know, we're not going to entertain you. You know, you're here to observe. You're here to watch, you know, practice. And we'll build a relationship with you most certainly, you know but that's outside of practice time. So we don't have anybody, you know, who, who has to cart, you know, coach right around or, or anybody who comes into the building around, you know, but we just build real genuine relationships um, with them, you know, always offer some, you know, can, can we grab a bite to eat? Can we do something? Maybe, you know, if that's in the, in the agenda, but, you know, we don't, uh, and the reality is the gym, doesn't really get full of coaches. They get to see them in so many different ways now, mm-hmm. the way the coaches watch them. Now, when things start to intensify and they're recruiting, then they're in the gym more. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you get more coaches at the AAU games, at the, you know, the Philly Live games and things like that. So it's a bit different. You know, I've seen that change over the years. Um, good, good. Hey, hey, Bruce, you got, you got anything else? I know you got to run here. Yeah, no, just just a, a quick one here, Coach. I mean, we're winding the summer down and what have you. Uh, you know, what do you look forward to as far as relaxation here, you know, in the next uh, 30, 60 days? I know, obviously, you've, you've got your own uh, uh, agenda for basketball or whatever like that, but what are some personal things that you're just kind of looking forward to and relaxing that, some people may not know about uh, Rick Perez that, you know, they should know. Uh, well, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I'm on a, a serious journey with God right now. You know, I, I really want to continue, you know, in my faith, um, you know, just, just studying and learning. Uh, I want to get away as much as possible. You know, I think one of the things, and it does take its toll, it's with your family, um, you know, being with your own kids, you know, mm-hmm. and, and doing those things. So really um, trying to spend more time with them, which I have been doing, you know, we get to go to Puerto Rico next week. Wow. great! Uh, you know, so I'm excited for that, but uh, it's really a time of reflection. You know, I can't, I can't be stuck in the hustle and bustle of life all, all the time, you know, as right. I used to be, um, you know, I'm not chasing anything you know, but happiness and love, you know, there's nothing that really throws me off. You know, I spend every morning in my Bible and I, like I said, I'm journaling, you know, uh, 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 my journey in basketball, you know, and in life, um, who knows what that'll become. Maybe it'll be something that sits in my computer. Maybe it's a book, who knows what it is, mm-hmm. but it has been very emotional for me to do that. Um, you know, realizing all the amazing people that have come through my life, um, and, and, and in doing that, I, I have no idea how I'm still standing here, but I am, you know, but, uh, you know, just doing those things, you know, really uh, spending a lot of time with my wife. I feel our relationship getting much better, you know, not that it was ever, you know, in a bad place, but it's, I, I just want to reconnect with everybody. You know, I want to share a beer with everybody I love, you know, I want to, I, I want to laugh. And if that means me missing, a, you know, a day on the court or me missing a meeting or whatever, I, I don't care. I don't because I, you know, I got to put the people first and I want to smile with everybody. So you guys are always welcome for dinner and a drink. 
Okay. Well, we and we've done that before. We'll have to get out for some wings at PJ's again, right? We, we should. There, we sure are, have. So. Are there wings available? That, that's what I want. To know. <laughs> that's a good one. Always. Maybe Always. thighs. You know, chicken <laughs> thighs. I don't know. Hey, yeah. can we play the game? My my daughter was in. She's in from LA. She's an artist, and uh, we were playing a game the other day. We we're just kind of talking. So I'm going to I'm going to throw this out at Coach Perez and then we'll we'll wrap it up here. So the game we played, it wasn't a game, but it's like, give me three words to describe Coach Perez. And I'm going to start with Coach Perez. Three words, oh, three, three words. words. Buddy. Yep. You're three, three oh. words that would describe you to a T. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. Right. Crazy. Good. Yeah, I agree. Uh, loving. Right. Good. And crazy loving. And uh and I and I won't be I won't be outworked. Yeah. I, I, I was gonna say competitive. That would have been my, in my third thing, you know. I mean, uh, for uh, you know, uh, I, I would totally agree with with with, with all of that, uh, Rick. It's it's a pleasure that uh I, I I'll just say I'm fortunate that I have opportunity to to you know cover your games and and you know uh, how we've developed uh, over the last couple of years getting to know one another and what have you and it's been very special for me and i'm just wishing you all the luck in the world um as a coach and as a person uh you're you're someone that we should all look up with and and uh so uh, congratulations oh, thank all you right. that, that's good enough. likewise let, let, let me throw my three words in here i, I got to do it um I was so lucky uh, when you guys came to McCaskey a couple of years ago, I just sat right next to your bench. Sometimes I get to sit different places there yeah. and um, it, it was interesting. I mean, your coaches were working and the kids were working and, and uh, I, I, I enjoy watching your kids on the bench. I mean, that's something that I used to do as, <laughs> as a, as a coach, I used to have my film guy film the bench. And I mean, I'm figured if they're not excited and my kids aren't excited and Oh, by the way, they know that that camera's on them. So you had a couple, you had a couple guys that were just nuts on the bench. So that, that was kind of cool to see. So I'm going to say my three words are emotional. Cause I think, I think on, on the floor, on the court, it, you're really into it. And I've had coach to be, to be quite honest, which I always am. I've had people come to me and say, well, that coach Perez, is, is, is he like that all the time? I said, yes, <laughs> yes, he is. That is no fake. And we're not playing for the fans. We're not playing for the camera. I mean, when he's down there doing defensive stands in the middle of the game, that's what he wants his kids to do. So, so emotional, I think, is a good one. Uh, caring is obvious. I mean, that is so obvious. You, you care about your family. You care about your religion. You care about your players. And, um, you know, you care about the city of Reading. And my last thing is going to be branding. You're very good at branding your brand. I mean, you are excellent at We Are Reading and this is what we do. And the, the PR that you've given to that city and, and to your program is outstanding. So, hey, thank you so much, Coach. Uh, we will be in touch. Thank you. Guys. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get in contact with you for an address and maybe, maybe you, maybe you get one of these hot shirts to wear in the, you know, in the middle of the summer. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I, I'll tell you what, I, I, if he wears that at McCaskey, I mean, I'll just flip out that. <laughs> well, we don't, we don't have him at McCaskey this year. It'll be the next oh. year. We'll have yeah, to be that, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're ready this year. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't All know. Right. I don't know if that's going to go over real well. You have to wait till you come up uh, over, uh, over, over the other county that way. So, hey, thanks for everything, Coach. Thank you, Bruce. It, All it's, right. Been, it's been a great time watching, and um, we appreciate everything that you do for us, Coach. Thank you so much. Thanks uh, you a lot. You guys are amazing. Thank you for the great Take opportunity. Keep up the great work. Okay, see you guys. Thank you. Bye now.